please do not allow yourself to be ruled by your emotions over this stuff. I mean, it was Gary, just a week ago, people were like suicidal because gold wasn't <laughs> going anywhere and the stocks were down and this is going to be worthless and I'm wasting my time. You get an $80 rally and all of a sudden, if gold's not 3000 by the end of this year, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and it, it just doesn't work that way. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, we're just in the first week of March. Gold has broken out. Bitcoin's broken out. Silver has not. The miners have not. What does it all mean? You know, my next guest, when he was on last time, he said gold 2300 for the year. Now people are looking uh, for multi-thousand dollar ounces. And hey, is it really coming? Craig Hemke, tfmetalsreport.com is with us now. Questions, comments, kl at kerrylutz.com. Craig, hey, it's good to be back here. Uh, I assume this isn't an AI representation of you, that it's really you, right? It is. I, I, AI would be much better looking right. and with much less wrinkles. All right. Well, uh, next time I have you on, I'll ask you to prove it. This time I'll take okay. your word for it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, but uh, the stock market's obviously being levitated by AI. And uh, who knows? I mean, I use it myself uh, to do jobs that I hate to do, like write show notes. It does it way better than me. And then I just, right, right. it's all good. But uh, But getting back here, there are some real assets still left in the world, the gold among them, gold trading over $2,100. Now the uh, the euphoria is kicking into high gear. Bitcoin hit over 68,000, all time high was 67.7 if I remember correctly. And uh, now they're, well, Bitcoin's pulling back, gold is uh, is adding to its gains. What are we to make of this? Well, in the big picture, Kerry, um, I think it's kind of confirming my thesis. And not to make it sound like, oh, that Craig, he's sure smart. I just study history. And I've, I've told you this lots of times. The paradigm changed in 2008. Okay. March, about this time. I think it was March the 8th or 9th or something like that in 2009 when the Ben Bernank came out and started QE1, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a one-off. And oh, no, 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 we're not monetizing the debt. No, 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 and we'll never do never this again, do right? Okay, that's when the paradigm changed. That's when the Fed suddenly became, you know, the, the buyer of last resort, the provider of liquidity to keep everything moving, right? And so unless that's wrong or unless that has shifted back, this notion that the Fed, you know, higher for longer and they're going to drown out inflation and they're serious this time, mm -hmm. I think it's folly because they've always, they've proved as recently as last March, as soon as the regional banks got in trouble, they had to come up with a new alphabet soup thing, you know, that near term funding facility and, you know, all this other stuff that I, they'll do it again. And so I've always maintained that. And, and a lot of people think, oh, no, but whatever. We got the first hint of that then back on Friday. I call them goons, people, the Fed governors, you know, that are all publicity <laughs> hounds. And if there's an open mic, they're going to grab it. Goon Waller, in a speech last Friday, said a couple of things that have that's what is what is driving gold. And that is basically he wants to do a new operation twist, as they call it, moving the what they're buying into the short end of the yield curve. OK, mm -hmm. by doing that, the idea would be that they would bring short term rates down. OK, because they're buying short term bonds, more buyers and sellers, higher price, lower rate. Second degree thinking off of that, then, is if that then uninverts the yield curve. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people know, you know, an inverted yield curve means there's going to be a recession, but the really recession begins when it uninverts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so secondary consideration here is if they buy short term notes and uninvert the yield curve, well, then now the recession is starting. And then Waller also said, by doing so, that opens up our ability to buy longer dated 
stuff the next time we need to do QE. Wait a second. I thought they were never going to do it again, Carrie. People were telling me that just a couple of months ago. So (laughs) um, when Waller said all that on Friday, that's when gold took off. It was already up about $10. It rallied another 30. Uh, It followed on with $30 gain yesterday. Uh, is now breaking out to new all-time highs. That and it's you know fine. That's I couldn't be more excited. But I re- I just cannot caution strongly enough as someone who has invested 15 years a lot of his life into this. Please do not allow yourself to be ruled by your emotions over this stuff. I mean, it was Gary just a week ago. People were like suicidal because gold <laughs> wasn't going anywhere and the stocks were down. And this is going to be worthless and I'm wasting my time. You get an $80 rally and all of a sudden, if gold's not 3000 by the end of this year, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and it, it just doesn't work that way. Okay. Yeah. Not in this pricing scheme. I mean, the true value of gold, if we're just going to exchange actual above ground ounces with clear title for dollars, that true value is multiples higher than 2000. But as long as we have this pricing scheme, where price is determined off the trading of the derivatives, then price is going to do what it's always done, which is move up in stages, mm-hmm. not to the moon. And I, yes. I just want to really caution people against buying into that hype. Exactly. And, you know, we don't want suicidal gold miners because they have <laughs> access to cyanide. So <laughs> you can have a lot of dead miners really quick, you know? I always so keep a pill right that. in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but seriously here you know uh well and expect- and a lot of people and, and you could say that you know a case for a low was in you know and like newmont is just this i i caught a lot of flack on twitter because i was like i'm never gonna own this i sold my i had a whopping 300 shares of newmont in my portfolio mm-hmm. and i blew it out yeah. and bought something else but i blew it out because Newmont and Barrick carry are both lower today than they were 20 years ago. Yeah, how can that be? And it's not, and it's not like there've been five splits on a split adjusted basis. They're lower than they were. I mean, they gold was $400 and they're earning less money and they have a lower share price now than they did then because it's terrible management. You're not controlling your costs well enough. You're not controlling your bloated corporate structure well enough. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you're not making any money. And so the companies don't go anywhere. So it doesn't mean you don't own the mining shares. Like you just don't own pig dog shit stocks like Newmont. You own others, which is mm-hmm. what I've yeah, done. But you look at are, it, you think maybe that was a low and maybe it was. And the stocks haven't broken out yet. Well, Newmont is restructuring. They're divesting. They want to raise $2 billion. You know, oh, they, uh, they bought the bought Gold Corp. They did a lot of, um, you know, a lot of buying and, uh, you know, they, well, with Newcrest, when that what they bought, I mean, they're the biggest miner in the world now. Yeah. Um, yeah. and Barrick bought, uh, what Barrick bought, um, uh, Anglo gold, Ashante or whatever. And but not Anglo gold, Ashante, uh, Rand gold, they bought Rand, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I, you're right. The, the shares themselves are way undervalued and maybe, you know, as price accumulates and as price does go to 2300 the profit margins will widen out enough that even Barrick and Newmont will participate. But for now, I mean, why would you, anybody own, I just picking one out of my portfolio. Why would you own Newmont or Barrick when you could own like Egg Nego Eagle, mm. which has an all-in sustaining cost of like under a thousand dollars. So they're making $1,200 an ounce or whatever here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I and mean, there's funny. still time to be in that sector, but um, there are just some that I just don't want to own. Yeah, well, you know, you know what these big companies do, though? They take these humongous write-offs when the stock is depressed, everything but the kitchen sink. And then when the profits really do turn around, it looks like they're geniuses, but all they did was right off everything but the kitchen sink yeah. to prepare for that day. So it's just another form of financial engineering. And so they're trying to raise $2 billion. Hey, you, you can't knock them because they still produce a lot of ounces, but but it seems like they're more expert at turning over dollars, you know? Yeah, yeah. And again, like any other company, man, you got to be mean and lean. You can't have 
all these divisions and executive vice presidents of such and such, you know, I, you gotta be more responsible in your management yeah. style. And I, and again, I'm, I, I, I don't know any of these people, but if it was any other company, I mean, how many other companies are public companies in general, right. That have been around for 20 years. Now I'm not talking like tech and AI or anything like that. I'm just go back and look at, I mean, you just go down the list that it, their stock is down. I mean, it goes up mm. and down, but it, you know, you can pull up a chart from 2004 and five and see Barrick and Newman in the forties. Mm -hmm. So I just, it augurs for, you know, what you do and the people that you uh, interview, you know, and the research that you do and the people that write newsletters that really pour their time and attention into finding the right ones to own. Cause if I'm right, and gold's going to 2300 and then maybe pulling back. And then boy, when they open the floodgates next year, look out. Um, you can you, know, you can leverage your fiat and you know make multiples of what the metal itself is doing, but you got to be smart about it. And to me, smart is not owning just the big miners. Hey, you want to be suicidal? Look at the uh chart for the GDXJ, and that's after they manipulated oh. the index and put in bigger companies and everything else. Man, yeah. it is like it is like the worst looking chart. Or the S I L J carry that oh uh, yeah junior silver. So mm. there's still again, there's still plenty of time if if you think, you know, to the moon after the last four days, there's plenty of time to position yourself to capitalize on that. I just again I I'm just amazed at this it, it, human emotions, particularly within our sector that can go from, oh, we're doomed to, oh, if we don't go to 3,000, if you're not forecasting $3,000 an ounce this summer, you're an idiot. Hey, hey. Well, you know that old uh, saying uh, Mark Twain uh, said, uh, rumors of my death have been uh, greatly exaggerated, right? Right, right. So, so what's the best way to play it besides physical, uh, you know, I don't see how you can make money in options with this. Oh no. Yeah. Unless, unless you can't, I, I, how is, um, I'm just trying to think metaphorically. It's like, you can't make money playing blackjack long-term either. Right. Not you anymore. might occasionally get a hot shoe or two. Right. And when you do, you know, you start pressing your bet, you know, and you get the tower of power of green chips out there like this, yeah. you know, and you make a boatload because you just caught lightning in a bottle. And yeah. I, back in 2010, 11, I did that trading silver options and made mm -hmm. into the six figures just on a couple of handful of silver options at a time because price went from 18 to 28 to 38 to 48. Yeah. But if I'd been sitting here playing calls nonstop ever since. Yeah, you wouldn't do, so, do too good. Right. Um, and that was, you know, actually, Carrie, that was something I discussed in my podcast. I do a daily podcast for everybody on my site. Um, and that was something I pointed out yesterday. Now, Granted, prices move very quickly to the upside over the last three or four days. And when that happens, or when it goes down really quickly, you get into new territory where price hasn't been for a while. And the, the volume of open interest in COMEX options will explode in whatever direction price is going. So like if price is just plunging mm -hmm. and you get down to where, you know, previously there was nobody buying or selling the puts at 1500 or something. And all of a sudden you're at 1500. Well, you're going to get a lot of people buying puts. Same is true on the other side. You know, when price is soaring like this, there's not a lot of people buying puts. Everybody's like, oh, give me the $2,200 calls and the $2,300 calls. Mm -hmm. There was, as of yesterday, there are options on the April gold contract. They're going to expire three weeks from yesterday. The $2,200 calls were trading at seven bucks, which means for anybody that bought that, the price of the April contract got to be above 2207 if you're going to yeah. do that math that way on mm -hmm. Monday, March the 25th. Okay. Otherwise, it's worthless. There were 7,200 of those calls. That's insane. Open. Yesterday. You know how many puts there were? Mm -hmm. 150. What does that tell you? So what, what did our last commitment of traders report uh, tell us, by the way? Well, and again, th this, these are all just these data points that you can use to kind of discern the short-term trend. That one tells you 
okay, maybe all hell breaks loose and gold does go to 2250 or 2300 by three weeks from now, but hmm. probably not, okay, because of that. That's a short-term little market thing that's got to work itself out. The commitment traders is another. Again, if the CF CFTC wanted us to have this information in a timely manner, they would provide it in a timely manner. <laughs> and on the sur the surveys are done every Tuesday at the Comex mm -hmm. close. They could crank all that all the stuff out by Wednesday morning at the open. It's like the unemployment numbers, the employment numbers. They could be giving us that real time. Right. But you know, no, 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 no. They no, do a survey, right? Not how they roll. So yeah. if last week, if we'd gotten the commitment of traders number on Wednesday morning, we would have seen that once again, the hedge funds that trade COMEX Silver had moved dramatically net short, leaving the banks net long. And you'd go on Wednesday morning, you'd go, hey, this might be a good time to buy some. And that's exactly what happened. Price skyrocketed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. But again, because they didn't give us that report until after Friday's close, the information was already stale. And a lot of that net short by the hedge funds has already been covered. That's why price has gone up. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, the gains continue. So <laughs> yeah. as far as uh, what the government has to do, so we're going to get, we're going to get like, well, the banks. Let's look at the banks. So the emergency lending facility, I haven't looked at it honestly in three weeks, but it just went up, up, up every single yeah. week. Yeah. I assume it has for the past month. Yeah. What what I don't know, you're talking about that bank term funding facility yeah. they opened last March. They mm -hmm. said the Fed came out a couple weeks ago and said we're going to discontinue that on they said it they said it would only be around for a year. They said they're going to discontinue. What I don't know is when we get to about a week from today, whether it goes away or if they're just going to stop taking new money. Or it gets replaced by something else. Yeah, yeah. That's my well, guess. They can't is... just stop. Well, yeah. And and so they're going to, and what'll be interesting to see, okay, so uh, is that problem fixed? Has it been papered over? You know, that ETF of the regional banks, the KRE would suggest, KRE. Hey, no problem. Yeah. I, I'm watching more of that, at reverse overnight reverse repo balance mm -hmm. um uh, goon bostic said yeah. yesterday that he, they're watching it too that if that what did he what was the words he used if it trends toward uh, a flow that is unhelpful or something like that didn't say it has to go to zero mm -hmm. he just said if that flows down to an unhelpful number that's going to impact how much of their quantitative tightening they can do well, that thing's gone from two and a half trillion down to 430 billion. And I don't know, I don't think it has to go to zero to no longer be helpful in terms of providing liquidity. So that's hanging out there too. Yeah, well, it's amazing. They've kept all these dishes in the air for as long as they have, <laughs> but until uh, they stop, you know, this is what we're dealing with. Yeah, right, let's, right. Let's and do... it gets worse, obviously, yeah. right? Just like the expanding debt. So, Carrie, it, it you know I would let's watch where gold goes this week. Um, the last time gold caught a surge of momentum was at the end of November, mm -hmm. and price closed above two thousand dollars an ounce for the first time ever to wrap up November. Correct. Surged again then on Friday the first of December, and at that point, mm -hmm. every bank short ever created was underwater. I mean, if you're at an all time high. Every short position is now a loser. And the banks the banks deliberately painted the charts on Sunday night the third. They stood down, they let price run up $50, and then immediately reversed it down $50 and created this ugly reversal candle on the chart, freaked everybody out, killed the momentum. And now for a good month, it tried to rally in late December. And now, you know, we've been correcting with rate cut expectations and everything else here this year. Well, we're right back up there again. Uh, price got right back up those same levels and making new all-time highs this week. I would just be mindful of what happened in December, not on a intraday reversal like they did to us that Sunday night, the 3rd of December, but a weekly basis this week because we got Powell's going to be on Capitol Hill Wednesday and Thursday doing his semi-annual mm -hmm. Humphrey Hawkins stuff. 
We got the JOLTS job openings data tomorrow. And most importantly, we got the latest jobs numbers coming out on Friday. Uh, by the time we get to the end of this week, if we can just go sideways, carry and finish the week up here, 2130 or something, be a mm -hmm. tremendously successful week. My concern is that they'll flip it. And instead of painting the daily chart, they'll paint the weekly chart with a double top, you know, and a red candle. Yeah. So as to kill the momentum again for a while. So I would just, um, anyway, long story short, I wouldn't be, I'm very optimistic, obviously, about where gold prices are headed sure. this year and next. I would be uh, reluctant to chase on emotion uh, today. Okay, I'll buy that. Hey, so what do you make of silver? Like silver has barely moved with this, yeah. after this big move in gold. That's generally yeah. not a good sign, right? Well, it, it's kind of a sign of malaise, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I think you can kind of, there are other things that have kind of siphoned off investment interest in owning silver for fun. Because again, if the price of silver is going to go up, people got to be buying the silver futures, right? Mm -hmm. And the banks are just printing money. The bank proprietary desks are just printing money by letting price go up, sucking the spec funds in on the long side, and then jamming it back Killing. down. They dump, yep. they get short, and then ripping it back up on the upside. Yep. So it's kind of stuck. Um, I When I wrote my forecast this year, I had a lot of people unhappy with me because I said, look, silver starting the year at whatever it began. I had 20 three i don't even shit, I carry i don't even remember it's already it's only two months ago and i can't. wasn't much <laughs> but anyway you look at the long-term chart you can plainly see it needs a break out above 28 to get people excited but it ain't gonna make 28 until it gets above 26 mm -hmm. and these are significant hurdles and so Gold can keep moving higher and silver can just kind of, you know, be struggling to catch up. At some point, though, it will, if anything, because of the math. If, if gold goes to 2300, I don't think the gold silver ratio is going to be 100 with silver at 23. Mm -hmm. You know, if gold goes to 2500, you know, next year, silver is not going to be trading at 25. So if gold goes up, eventually it will just by magnetism almost for silver up through 26 and 28. And then when that happens, it might be able to take on a life of its own. Yeah, but we're certainly not there yet. No. All right, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. And hey, Bitcoin, finally. I know we're not big Bitcoin traders, but you got to be following it. Hits a yeah. new all-time high. You know, it's coming uh, coming off from, you know, had a 50% retracement from its all-time high. Uh, down to the 30s, and then yep. now it's back. Was it 68? Now it's pulling back a little bit after making its high, which is kind of the way one expects, right? Yeah, and if if you know you open these ETFs, if they're to be real, you know, not just simply owning Big Bitcoin if. futures, but if they're to be real, then they have to, you know, cash flows into them, and then they got to go buy Bitcoin, right? You can't just say, ah, oh, we don't, we're just going to take our chances. And yeah, so that's what's been happening. There's been this surge of demand for Bitcoin where mm -hmm. on a daily basis, there's not that much supply. And so if you got more demand than supply, it goes up. That's why, you know, I wish I've known uh, Max Kaiser and his wife, Stacy for, I don't know, a decade. Sure. And I mean, they were harping on Bitcoin, you know, in 2011 know. and 12 and 13. And I, you know. If I, well, one, if I'd been smart enough to buy it at 10, I'm sure I'd have blown it all out at a hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I made sure. 10 times my money, right? So it's not yeah. like I'd be a billionaire. No, um, same here. But, but I was smart enough in 2016 to buy some mm -hmm. at about $600. Not much, enough that yeah, I don't really- I bought. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just enough that it's just, I just- hold on, hold on for dear life. I don't, you know, I don't really pay that. I don't watch it every day. I'm not looking to sell it. Um, but anyway, I saw, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm a believer of the math and that's why I finally bought it in 16. Cause I was like, I finally understood. I was like, okay, wait a second. If awareness is going to be increasing annually, meaning demand for it then maybe is increasing at a time where supply is always decreasing, mm -hmm. you know, with these halvings. Yeah. Which we're coming up on one shortly. Yeah. How does that dog not hunt? 
Yeah. I mean, anything that's just, you know, that's your demand curve and your supply curve that they teach in econ 101, right? I would think, yeah. Supply is decreasing while demand's increasing leads to a higher price, a higher equilibrium price. And so that's why I bought it. And now, you know, I mean, it's up a hundred percent, you know, a hundred times from where I bought it. Um, yeah. Anyway, that should continue to work. Now, the financialization of it, you know, where the banks are getting involved and BlackRock and stuff like that, that makes me nervous because, you know, usually anything they touch, they're only doing it so they can get their talons into it. And yeah, of course. So that concerns me, but I do think the long term chart, and it, I mean, it, I, I don't have anybody to do this. Go to a, a site like a barchart.com and pull up a monthly, make it logarithmic because otherwise it'll be all out of whack, you know, to go from yeah. $10 to 60000 You got to do a log sure. chart. But you can see it goes through these kind of cup periods of mm -hmm. two or three or four years, and then it breaks yeah, absolutely. out. Absolutely. And then it does another cup, and then it breaks out. And then, and then, I just done it repeatedly. And so the cup level, the top of the cup now is those all time highs around, you know, 68, 69,000. And so I don't, Carrie, why wouldn't it break out and surge again? I had the, the, the laws of supply and demand, I don't think have been um, waved off. So uh, no. I just continue to hold it. I mean, Very and why can't you hold both? That's what it was. That just drives me crazy. Yeah. Why can't you own both? I do. Hey, yeah, I do. One one thing I would just point out is these ETFs technically are ETPs, and ETPs are tracking securities. Now, supposedly Fidelity swears up and down that they're going to be uh, holding physical, well, yeah. for, for lack of a better term, I want to say physical Bitcoin, but that's a bit of an right. oxymoron. But you know what I'm saying, like I know what you're saying, and they 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 have to. Now, I mean, hmm. maybe they can just buy the futures and think, okay, we got our exposure to price, and so we're hedged and covered. But yeah. I, man, that would be a pretty shaky business model. I think uh, so. So I I got to figure that that, and again, that's just an increasing awareness as that becomes normalized. These products over the next couple of years, all of a sudden. You know, so Fidelity will put a, B a Bitcoin ETF in their investment options and all the 401k plans for which they're, right. you know, custodian. And so I don't get, I, I don't know. I don't see why it doesn't keep going up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as, uh, and, and uh, you know, as long as the demand's there, people yeah. keep, uh, new, more and more people keep discovering it. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, and a loss of faith in uh, in traditional investments. You imagine yeah. if there's a stock market decline, what'll happen? I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Or, so, so stock market. Let's just end it with that. Uh, we've had these magical AI stocks, uh, artificially inseminated uh, shares, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's all the rage. You know, Wall Street loves a good story. They love a good meme just like the rest of us, uh, where does this end? I, Gary, I, I looked, uh, just an example, I looked at that SMCI, that super microcomputer, they make rack-based mm -hmm. servers for artificial intelligence. And it, that thing has gone from $300, $300 a share to $900 a share in like four weeks in January. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is going to be a chance to buy some puts. Well, then on options expiration day in February, it went, which was the third Friday of the month, which was like the 16th. It went from a thousand to 700 in a day. And I thought, well, I missed that. Well, maybe it'll come up and double top and I'll be a chance to buy some puts then. And it did, it went back up to a thousand. But I was like, eh, I've just kind of hem and hawed didn't want. And then all of a sudden it gets included in the S&P 500. Oh, uh, it's all over. Over the weekend. And now it's, you know, up another 20%. I, I think it's, you know, what's the old Keynesian line about the market being irrational longer than you can solve it? You can remain solvent, right? Perfect example, isn't it? Yeah, and I and I would, I, don't know, I have been discussing more and more frequently over the last year when that comes up, the idea and reminding everybody that old, whatever it is, Austrian economics or whatever of the <laughs> crack up boom. Yeah, you know that you get to this point. It's like here it is on my desk, brother. I keep this right there. Yeah. History is replete with examples where you get to this point where the money printing becomes so extreme, keeping those plates spinning, as you said, that basically yeah. everything goes up. It has to, with Germany. Yeah. You know, 
And so, you know, I, I tried to outsmart myself a couple of times, even last year thinking, okay, the stock market is really rolling over this time. (laughs) And all I did was bounce back. And so maybe we're in that crack up boom phase, you know, where, um, all the dips just get bought, but until I'll give you one last thing, Carrie, and I might've said this before, you know, remember the old fear and greed index in the stock market, you know, and it oscillates back and forth. Mm -hmm. The only fear I see in the stock market is fear of missing out. Yeah. FOMO. Yeah. Till that changes. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll leave it at there. So uh, FOMO rules will be the headline of this interview. And now a little of that spreading to metals, which isn't a bad thing. Maybe it'll spread to silver and the miners, and then we'll see a real rally here. But until certain things happen, until silver starts to move, you got to wonder how long this rally is going to last. Uh, but hey, I'm optimistic. Hey, make sure you go over to Craig's site, tfmetalsreport.com. And uh, hey, sign up for uh, the forum there. It's, uh, I think it's inflation has hit even TF Metals. <laughs> yeah. I think it's now the cost of a latte. It used to be the cost of a cup of coffee. I, w- I went to Dutch. You ever been to a Dutch Brothers? No, we don't have them here in Florida. Uh, it, uh, I went to go check it out, and I got a small little espresso thing, and it was six friggin' bucks. Hey, uh, I, okay, well, this better be good. Um, I'm in the... <laughs> so for two I'm and a half of yeah. those, you can join my site for a month. Hey, I'm in the process of uh, setting up a site and a newsletter called The Inflation Cafe, where money goes to die. <laughs> where dollars go to die. So like uh, if you want to sign up for that, shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Okay. Along with any questions you might have for Craig, we will get you on the list. And the link to Craig's site is in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for that newsletter. You'll automatically be signed up for the Inflation Cafe. Craig, always a pleasure, man. We'll check in with you in about uh, six weeks or so and see what the circus is doing then. You got it, my friend. It's always fun.